Berry. Warren Olney back with Which Way LA. The Federal Centers for Disease Control produced a surprising finding today about the epidemic of deaths in America from prescription painkillers. Drug overdoses kill 16,000 people a year. Previously, it had been thought that chronic abusers got their pills from friends and family. The CDC says today 27 percent get them directly from a physician's prescription. Lisa Garian reports on these issues for the Los Angeles Times. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Glad to be here. Now let's talk first about the CDC study. This seems to fly in the face of what had been thought before. Right. So what they did was they looked at where um, prescription drugs that are being misused are coming from, and they do this based on an annual national survey of drug abuse or drug use. And what they found was among people who use prescription drugs um, or misuse them almost every day, chronically, on a chronic basis, those people get them um, most of the time, 27% of the time, in fact, from doctors. And how many pills are we talking about uh, per user? Uh, That kind of information is not in the study, but um, if if you're using pills every day, that's at least a pill a day, but probably more than one pill a day if you're chronically addicted. So 27%. uh, What had they thought before? So before, the way the survey was uh, analyzed in the past um, had really driven the response to the problem. And it was driven by this idea that they were getting them from friends and family. Um, But that's when you look at all people who misuse prescription drugs, whether you do it like, you know, once a week or on the weekend or, you know, every day. When you separate out, when they pulled out the people who use them chronically almost every day, the people that they think are at greatest risk of overdosing and dying, that's where they found friends and family were not the primary source. Um, They were still an important source, but even a bigger source was doctors through prescriptions. And what about your study at the Los Angeles Times a couple of years ago? Yeah, so um, the CDC study really echoed what we found. Um, We, uh, Scott Glover, my reporting colleague, and I looked at um, coroner's reports in four counties in Southern California, including Los Angeles, over a six-year period. We pulled almost 4,000 coroner's reports on overdoses involving prescription drugs. And we were actually looking at this very idea. Where are people getting their drugs? Are they really getting them from the black market and from friends and from grandma's medicine cabinet? Or are they coming from doctors? Because these are, after all, prescription drugs. And we found that in 47% of the cases, nearly half, which is, it was more than 1,700 cases, um, the people who died, uh, died from drugs um, prescribed to them by their doctors. And there have been uh, recent prosecutions of doctors uh, who have prescribed uh, recklessly. Right, right. There are, and that's going on, and that certainly is a contributor to the problem, doctors who have turned their prescription pads into cash registers. However, what the CDC study was pointing to and what the experts that we talked to um, drew from it was that there's also a big problem and maybe a bigger problem of doctors who are trying to do their best but just aren't well enough informed about the risk of these drugs and, um, and, and taking into account that into account with their, their limited benefits. Are we talking Oxycontin, Vicodin, and Norco principally? Yeah, and Percocet. Yeah, absolutely, those kinds of drugs. Mm-hmm. Okay, Lisa Garion, again, reporter for the Los Angeles Times. Dr. Mitchell Katz is director of the Los Angeles County Department of Health Services. Uh, he's in, been a doctor of internal medicine uh, since 1989. Dr. Katz, good to have you on our program. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, are we doing enough, first of all, about those doctors who are reckless? Uh, no, I think that, that more needs to be done about uh, physicians who are using their prescription pad uh, to bo- boost their income. But I do believe that there are a lot of prescriptions being written by physicians who are trying to do the right thing, um, but who you know don't fully recognize how dangerous uh, opiates are for chronic use. What do you do? Well, uh, this is an area where I feel opiate pain medicines are very effective in people who had surgery, who had a recent accident. I also feel that for patients on hospice who are at the end of their life, you want to make sure as a doctor that the person's not in pain. The mistake has been prescribing very high doses of these opiates for people who have chronic pain. The evidence in in these cases is that patients are not actually going to get better. The chance of addiction is very high, 
uh, and as the CDC study that you spoke of showed, even death as a side effect. So I try to talk to my patients with chronic pain and help them to understand that opiates are not an effective treatment for chronic pain. Uh, on the other hand, uh, they get a lot of advertising and uh, they are in pain. So uh, how do they take it when you say, uh, yes, there is this uh, opiate that uh, might resolve your problem, at least temporarily, uh, but you're going to get addicted and might die? Sure. Well, you raised two very good points. First is that the pharmaceutical companies have been involved in through CME, Certified Medical Education Programs, really trying to push the envelope on the idea that, that the doctor's job is to make people pain-free. I think 50 years ago, people understood that life has pain uh, and that all pain cannot be made to go away. I think now there is more the assumption that as a physician, it's my job to take away the pain. So what I try to do with my patients is explain that what I want is the best for them. What I want is to help them to deal with the problem they have, but to make it clear that setting an expectation that I'm going to get them out of pain, it's not going to work. It isn't possible. And so I'm, I'm clear right at the beginning that my, my ability to get them out of pain is not existent. I have to help them to learn to live with their chronic pain. Have you had patients uh, that you thought were, in fact, abusing drugs uh, beyond what they were originally intended for? Yes. I've, I, I've seen examples in part because uh, of having registries or, or dedicated pharmacists who've called and said, um, your patient is getting opiates from more than one physician. Did you know that? Uh, before the state registry was available, that was the only way is through dedicated pharmacists calling you because you, you would only know, well, I had prescribed this amount. You would have no way of knowing that, that this person had gone to three other physicians and had also gotten prescriptions. Is the state registry adequate? The, straight, the state registry has to be made easier to use. So at the, at the current time, a practicing physician would have to take a set of forms and have them notarized just to be able to use the registry. We want to make it easier. So I think that that, uh, that is one step. I also think we have to be allow physicians as a group to say to patients, that we understand that you're in pain, but we cannot make you pain-free. There have been legal uh, cases against doctors for, quote-unquote, failing to take away the patient's pain. Again, Dr. Mitchell Katz is director of the Los Angeles County Department of Health Services, and he, as you've indicated, as you've heard, uh, has been an internal medicine doctor since 1989. April Rivero is with us. Her son, Joey, died from an overdose that involved prescription drugs. She's now founder and CEO of the National Coalition Against Prescription Drug Abuse. And April Rivero, it's nice to have you on our program. Thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, tell us a bit, do you, how, how do you think this happened to your son? Oh, gosh, well, um, how it happened was uh, he was off at uh, college attending the Arizona State University right out of high school. He um, He went to that university and he was just a few months away from graduating when he took a road trip with some other fraternity kids to um, Los Angeles from Tempe, Arizona, where he was attending school, and they went in to see a doctor. A uh, very short time after, they walked out, all of them with prescriptions in hand, directed to go to a pharmacy that was about 30-some miles away, and walked in there with no questions asked, had all the prescription filled. Nine days later, he was dead from a prescription overdose. So I think our listeners uh, will uh, be very sympathetic to your uh, situation, and, and uh, you're, you're, you're brave, and, and I think it's important that you are willing to uh, uh, talk about it. So in this case, it would appear uh, that uh, your son and others really didn't have any reason uh, to get uh, prescription pain uh, killers, but they were given them anyway. This would be uh, a doctor that was either reckless or, uh, or had crime in, ha in, in mind. Uh, yes, in fact, that doctor has been sitting uh, in jail for two years now. She was arrested on March 1st, 2012, and charged with second-degree murder in his death, my son's death, as well as two other young men. And there are 21 other felony counts that she'll be answering to once the trial began sometime this year, we assume. Um, they were all, you know, the other 21 counts were 
all felony, illegal prescribing, one count of fraud. So 24 altogether with the potential of going to jail for 44 years to life. So um, she's been connected not just to those three deaths, but I believe they're up to 18 or 19 of her patients have died so, as a result of prescribing patterns that she had. Other than speaking out as you're doing now, uh, what does the National Coalition Against uh, Pres- Prescription <clears throat> Drug Abuse do? Well, we founded the organization uh, after realizing that we were not unique in, in basically knowing nothing about the prescription drug abuse epidemic that was definitely brewing and has certainly become the case now. So the organization is very focused on basically educating the community and doing what we can from a policy change and legislative advocacy standpoint to make changes happen that we think will address the problem and hopefully curb prescription drug abuse overall. April Rivero, thanks for joining us. We'll be back to you in a moment. But I want to go back to Lisa Girion of the Los Angeles Times. What about the medical board in uh, Sacramento? What are they doing about this? Uh, the medical board uh, came under a lot of pressure last year from lawmakers um, after our study, uh, finding that so many um, overdose deaths were linked to prescriptions written by doctors. And in most cases, the medical board was unaware of the deaths or the link to physicians. Um, so they are, um, the first thing they did was they uh, appointed a task force to look at prescribing guide to revisit the prescribing guidelines that exist in California and see if there were ways that they could uh, tighten them up and um, have doctors um, uh, use more caution in prescribing these kinds of drugs. And they're still working on that. Um, There were a number of bills also that went through uh, the legislature last year um, addressing this problem. Some of them were passed into law and some didn't make it. Uh, I can't help asking about your comment that the board was unaware either of the uh, prescription drug Uh, abuse problem or uh, the fact that uh, doctors, in fact, have been prescribing drugs that uh, kill people. How'd they explain that? Well, specifically, they were unaware of the the deaths that we identified. You know, we came up with 1,762 deaths in Southern California over the six-year period where doctors prescribed drugs that were contributing, that contributed or caused the deaths. They were not aware of those because no one was reporting them to the board. And to this day, no one is reporting them to the board. In fact, the day after that story ran, then Senator Curran Price said, I'm going to propose a bill that would require coroners to report overdose deaths involving drugs prescribed by doctors to be reported to the board so they can at least review them and see if there's a problem. Um, That bill made it through the legislature, but uh, Governor Brown vetoed it. What did he what reason did he give for vetoing it? Um, I think it was a finance, it was going to be a cost issue for the state, um, and that, that was his problem with it. But so to this day, the board couldn't do the same kind of analysis and link doctors to deaths the way uh, Scott, Scott and I did. April Rivero, uh, that must have been frustrating for you. Well, it is very frustrating because another tool, of course, that they have um, access to but they hadn't been using was the Cures Program, our prescription drug abuse monitoring program. Um, the DEA uses it to identify top, you know, bad performers, let's say, and uh, they had access to it, but they they just aren't using it proactively. So they still have a tool. They're just not using it from, from everything I can see. So, Dr. Katz, back to you. You're director of the L.A. County Department of Health Services. Uh, does your department have a role in this? Well, certainly within our own four hospitals and 15 clinics, we're working hard to make sure that people are prescribing appropriately. We've set out guidelines in terms of avoiding uh, use of high-dose opiate medications, and also as a government entity, we have easier access to be able to use that registry on the state level. Should there be, do you think, uh, reporting to the board by uh, coroners, uh, whatever it might cost the state? Yes, I believe there should be. And what would the consequence be? Well, the, the idea is to bring attention Um, to what is killing people. That's the whole point of reportable diseases, right? The reason we have reportable diseases uh, from medical examiners is so that we as public health people and as citizens understand what's killing people. It's an important cause. Lisa Guerin, you mentioned uh, Curran Price. He was in the legislature. Now he's in the city council of Los Angeles. Are there anybody in the legislature in Sacramento uh, that's pushing this again? Uh, yeah, uh, Senator Ted Lieu uh, is is still very interested and on on you know trying to find uh, additional things to do. And uh, Senator uh, Desanier from up north is as well. 
Um, the other thing that's going on at the state level is there is a ballot measure that deals with a lot of things, including medical malpractice. But one of the elements of that is uh, a uh, mandate that doctors check this registry known as cures that Dr. Katz was talking about, that they would have to check it before they prescribed one of these dangerous narcotic drugs. And what they would find is whether or not the person that they were about to prescribe to or considering prescribing to uh, had, in fact, uh, recently taken the same drug or a similar drug? Absolutely. Yeah. They would just get a, a nice history of their prescription drug use, and they could see if it made sense or, or if it really seemed like, you know, oh, if they've gotten the same thing from three different doctors in the past two months or something, you know. Dr. Katz, this would seem elementary, uh, and, and g given that we have computers, uh, I, I would think listeners would be astonished that we aren't doing this on a regular basis. Right. Well, the registry is actually a fairly recent uh, innovation, but it, it, it is very effective. I've used it myself, it, and it works in both uh, ways. That is, sometimes I, I've used it to verify that my patient isn't getting prescriptions from any other physician, and I learned that, and I feel good. Uh, and sometimes I learn that the person is, and then I have to change my own prescribing for that patient. April Rivero, we just have a minute or so left, but are there other states that are uh, are doing this on a better, a regular basis? Uh, New York uh, is a standout from my perspective in um, how they have brought really successful legislation to the table and implemented it. So I would say they are. There are some others brewing out there, but um, New York is probably the the number one in my mind. And uh, Dr. Katz, in the meantime, what sorts of guidelines do you give the doctors that work in your hospitals? Well, the, the major guideline is to distinguish um, the difference between acute pain uh, as well as people who need pain medicines for hospice care and patients with chronic pain. Part of why prescribing has gone wrong is people are just thinking about pain okay, well, the person has pain, therefore I'm going to prescribe an opiate. Instead of thinking, well, opiates have been shown to be helpful for acute pain and the sake of hospice, but not for chronic pain. And what we've been offering is other alternative modalities, such as physical therapy, uh, counseling, other ways of people gaining more control over their life instead of relying solely on a prescription medication. Are patients resistant? Um, I think there is the belief, well, when I, I think a common thing a patient will say to me is when I say, well, the opiates have significant side effects, they'll say, well, well, but is there anything else that you can provide? And I have to explain, well, no, there's nothing that's going to take away your pain, but that doesn't mean that we can't work to improve the quality of your life. But once again, then, uh, you have to counteract the advertising uh, by uh, the pharmaceutical companies. Correct. And the misunderstanding that, that, that opiates, which have been shown to be effective for acute pain, they actually have not been shown to be effective in chronic pain. And part of the difference is that people do become tolerant to the effect of opiates. You see a lot of side effects. We, we've been talking about, you know, death and the serious ones. But often people's lives are made miserable by very serious constipation, inability to urinate. Um, we have problems with people becoming disoriented uh, because of the medicines. These are medicines that have a lot of side effects. The, the question that a doctor and patient have to answer is, on balance, is the patient going to be better or worse if I prescribe this medication? Well, thank you so much for being with us, uh, all of you. Dr. Mitchell Katz, again, Director of the Los Angeles County Department of Health Services. April Rivero, who is the head now of the National Coalition Against Prescription Drug Abuse. And Elisa Garian, reporter for the Los Angeles Times. Great to have you all. Thanks so much. Remember, you can join the conversation on our Which Way LA Facebook page.